Hello people, in this video we want to look at the classification of tumors of bone. This topic you have already seen in pathology, right? Um, so anyways, we will look at it again here in orthopedics. So basically bone tumors, you should remember based on a lot of things. First let us look at based on location, okay? What do you see here guys? So here they have shown you the knee joint uh, as an example. Basically first what you see here are the epiphyseal tumors. Okay, and then here they are showing you the metaphyseal tumors and below here in blue they are showing you the diaphyseal tumors. So you need to know the names and where exactly they occur. Location is very important guys. So on, on the uh, first part what you are seeing are benign and the second part whatever you are seeing are malignant. Malignant you need to remember mainly osteosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. These two are very important. Osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma very important. Two names you have to know osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma. And on this side, benign, you should know giant cell tumor, that is osteoclastoma. Remember, clastoma. And uh, what else you should know here? Um, osteoid, osteoma also they have asked in your exam in, of orthopedics. And um, that's it. Uh, you need to know these many names. Let me just tell you what occurs where. When it comes to epiphysis, you have chondroblastoma and joint cell tumor. Chondroblastoma cartilage, so it can undergo calcification. Joint cell tumor, also called as osteoclastoma, it can become malignant rarely. Then that time it will be called as malignant giant cell tumor, so that is osteoclastoma. Usually it will affect the lower end of uh, radius and the lower end of femur, etc. Okay, that is giant cell tumor. In giant cell tumor, what will you see? Soapable appearance, honeycomb appearance, etc. Right. Then now let us move to metaphysis, guys. So what did you look at so far? We looked at epiphyseal tumors. Epiphyseal tumors, we saw there is uh, uh, giant cell tumor, osteoclastoma, and chondro, chondro, did I say blastoma? Yes, chondroblastoma and giant cell tumor, osteoclastoma we have seen. That is epiphysis. Epiphysis, nothing malignant that you have to remember. Okay. Now coming to metaphysis. Metaphysis we are looking at now. Metaphysis you should know that uh, there is osteochondroma which is exostosis. You can see here something that is coming out. Exostosis, osteochondroma. You can remember. Here you can remember osteosarcoma. Okay. So now let us uh, say what will we see in metaphysis. Osteo Chondroma and osteosarcoma. Sarcoma is the malignant one in the metaphysis. Remember, osteosarcoma. Okay. Then, let's move to diaphysis. Diaphysis seems to have a lot of uh, things here. So, diaphysis, guys, you should remember that there is osteoid osteoma. This they will ask in the exam actually. Osteoid osteoma is actually a very common condition, benign. It is a true benign condition, something like that. Okay. It is the commonest true benign uh, tumor of the bone. So that is osteoid osteoma. And then you have uh, some other names which are highlighted here are adamantinoma and amyloblastoma. Okay. So uh, basically amyloblastoma is of the mandible and aman adamantinoma is actually the epithelial tumor of tibia. Okay guys, anyways, uh, don't break your head too much. On the uh, carcinoma side, that's the malignant uh, side, you have the chondrosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. Very important to know this. Uh, so, which are the uh, diaphyseal tumors? Diaphyseal tumors, that is, it affects the diaphysis of the bone. Those uh, will be here um, on this side. Uh, we want to write what? Ewing sarcoma and uh, chondrosarcoma. Chondrosarcoma and Ewing sarcoma. Lymphoma also they have mentioned here. Diaphysis, they have actually on the benign condition sites, they have mentioned what? On the benign condition sites, they have mentioned osteoid osteoma, adamantioma, um, and at least remember osteoid osteoma, wait, I am kind of forgetting. Osteoid osteoma, osteoid osteoma, osteoid osteoma, adamant, adamantinoma, Amyloblastoma is another name for the same condition but in uh, mandible. Okay. So, guys, uh, can you, based on location, can you say what and all you have learned? Important ones. So, you have three parts of the bone. You have the epiphysis, the metaphysis, and the uh, diaphysis. In, uh, let's write the uh, sarcoma, the sarcoma part of it very easy. See, one thing here, you will not find any. Um, Carcinoma, right? Because it's not mostly epithelial. It's mostly mesenchymal origin. So you have osteosarcoma, Ewing's sarcoma, chondrosarcoma, right? Chondrosarcoma also is diaphysis. 
correct chondro sarcoma ewing sarcoma three sarcomas only you have to remember now what about the benign conditions uh, giant cell tumor very important for exam osteoclastomitis epiphysis it will affect so bubble appearance honeycomb appearance etc um, usually the lower end of femur and the lower end of radius also will have this giant cell tumor then uh, another thing you saw in metaphysis the benign conditions osteochondroma exostosis of the bone then diaphysis uh, you saw osteoid as uh, osteoma on the benign side and then adamantinoma okay so based on the uh, location you can classify bone tumors like this guys now let us go one step further there are many types of classification of bone tumor okay look at this one uh, this is another classification where they are telling you that um, uh, this is these are the primary bone and cartilage tumors look at this these these are very important for you these many the same thing only but they have arranged it in a different way see there is bone forming cartilage forming then hematopoietic then unknown uh, here they have the osteoclast one that means a kind of bone destruction kind of thing and then you have the uh, notochordal tumor which is nothing but the chordoma it is from the notochord okay it is uh, notochord so it is chordoma okay anyways that is a uh, malignant condition so this is another classification that you have to know guys so how is it going is it becoming too much see guys bone tumors you have classified based on location very easy location on the bone but there is yet another type of classification when they where they saying it is bone forming or it is cartilage forming or it is um, um, what else did you see hematopoietic that is a bone marrow type of things and then unknown in unknown they have actually mentioned osteoclast right that is the giant cell tumor etc then you have here they had mentioned one more that is uh, uh, that uh, notochord notochord or something right in that you have the uh, chordoma sorry not not notochord what chord was it yeah notochord only okay so basically here you have to know some names guys in bone forming bone forming you have osteosarcoma okay on the side mainly you remember this other things actually you don't need to know at all uh, you have osteoid or osteoma okay fine osteoid osteoma osteosarcoma okay sarcoma very important osteo osteosarcoma bone forming okay that's why in osteosarcoma you will see that it's sun burst pattern it is just bursting out it's bone forming okay and then there'll be cord band triangle etc and uh, look at the age here 10 to 20 years so that is in the second decade of life it will affect this osteosarcoma now coming to the next one guys so after bone forming you have another uh, way of classifying right uh, these uh, tumors now we'll go to cartilage forming cartilage forming means uh, always you'll have the word chondro see enchondroma osteochondroma chondroblastoma so many things and here you have chondrosarcoma Okay, this affects what? Chondrosarcoma affects the diaphysis. Very good. You have already seen the location. Osteosarcoma affects what? The metaphysis. Very good. Now, let us go to this one. Hematopoietic uh, tumor. That means marrow tumor. That means here you have to know myeloma, right? Uh, you have seen uh, my, multiple myeloma, lymphoma also they are mentioning. Okay, very good. Now, let us go to the fourth category, unknown. See, so you had bone forming, cartilage forming, marrow something. But now, it is unknown actually it is osteoclast osteoclast sounds like a bad word for the bone right bone destruction kind of thing here you have the giant cell tumor the same giant cell tumor can become malignant malignant giant cell tumor okay then here you also have the ewing sarcoma which is unknown actually they are saying uh, it affects the diaphysis right uh, again and then um, in ewing sarcoma you'll see some onion peel appearance etc then notochordal they have mentioned only one malignant chordoma chordoma it's not chondroma it is chordoma remember that is notochordal tumor okay guys uh, a lot of uh, information you got now and uh, it must be really annoying for you anyways now let us move on to the non-osseous tumors just you have to know a little about these non-osseous tumors basically something to do um, not directly with the bone but uh, uh, something uh, which supports the bone kind of thing like vascular tumors, fibrogenic tumors, neurogenic tumors, lipogenic, histiocytic tumors, okay, like hemangioma, then counterpart in malignancies, angiosarcoma. Guys, how is it going? Lipoma, liposarcoma. And this one also you should know, guys. Where is that? Okay, fine. These are all the types of uh, tumors, bone, okay. So you have understood yet another classification of uh, bone tumors, right? Very good. See guys, uh, there is a lot. Let us take it slowly. You have understood now the classification of bone tumors based on bone forming, cartilage forming, hematopoietic, other uh, things. That means unknown things. That is osteoclast and then neuro, 
notochord okay and then is a non osseous tumor okay now whatever you saw now all of them are tumors okay but some conditions are there which are tumor like okay so let's look at that here now tumor like uh, lesions so you have some cysts which are simple cysts or an aneurysmal cyst okay simple cyst basically cyst okay tumor like right then you have fibrous dysplasia which can be poly osteotic or uh, mono osteotic so this fibrous dysplasia word also is very important then you have um, so many other conditions okay so we're not going into that at least cyst and the fibrous dysplasia these two words you need to know okay in this uh, actually they are showing you the fibrous dysplasia of the upper end of femur so is that somewhere here fibrous dysplasia of upper end of femur okay multiloculated lesion so those were some conditions of the bone which are tumor like but not actually tumor so just look at this classification of bone tumor same thing only nothing new here for you bone forming you have osteoid uh, uh, osteoma osteosarcoma cartilage forming you already know chondroblastoma chondrosarcoma you can say giant cell tumors can be benign or malignant marrow tumors we told you multiple myeloma ewing sarcoma so they are putting there and then uh, lymphoma then coming to vascular tumors hemangioma becoming angiosarcoma this also we have told you then other tumors uh, same thing that adamantinoma etc they don't know why it is all there right okay uh, so this is all about the classification of bone tumor guys look at this uh, by age if you see which one uh, is coming first like ewing sarcoma 5 to 20 years okay it's the most aggressive tumor worst tumor they are saying then comes this osteosarcoma in second decade of life right osteosarcoma then giant cell tumor somewhere in between 20 to 40 years <clears throat> then then you have uh, metastasis to the bone okay everything above 40 years like uh, it can metastasize from the breast or from the prostate or from the lung then you have multiple myeloma above 40 years okay guys so this is another type of uh, you can say way of looking at the list of bone tumors <clears throat> now look at the common sites where all these occur see what are we concerned about we are concerned about um giant cell tumor we are concerned about osteosarcoma ewing sarcoma osteoid osteoma they will ask in the exam they can ask you osteochondroma or, or exostosis all of these affect the femur guys all of these affect the femur so now that all affect the femur just look at this sarcoma will affect the lower end of femur osteoclastoma which is giant cell tumor that will also affect lower end of femur only okay that is good for us distal tumor is the exostosis so look at this uh, table here giant cell tumor will affect what we told you it will affect the femur very good very good giant cell tumor will affect the femur fibrous dysplasia also will affect the femur now look, let's look at cyst guys cyst and aneurysmal aneurysmal uh, bone cysts basically these are what tumor like right see what it affects upper humerus just touch uh, below your shoulder upper humerus that is the simple bone shift uh, bone cyst can affect that aneurysmal uh, bone cyst uh, actually they are uh, telling about tibia okay so guys in this video we looked at the classification of the tumors of bone basically is based on location uh you have the epiphyseal like uh, chondroblastoma giant cell tumor or osteoclastoma metaphyseal you have osteochondroma and osteosarcoma guys here we are just revising pay attention and then coming to diaphyseal you will write uh, osteoid osteoma and uh, adamantinoma chondrosarcoma ewing sarcoma lymphoma etc okay and then uh, look at the photos here uh, just some nice images are there here look at these um, these ones here first on top here what do you have chondroblastoma that is uh, affecting the epiphysis then you have the giant cell tumor affecting the epiphysis the same images they have shown here chondroblastoma affecting epiphysis then uh, giant cell tumor affecting epiphysis then um, for um, below here the photos actually both of these indicate the diaphysis one osteoid osteoma and the adamantinoma okay now coming to uh, the side of it malignancy malignant condition osteosarcoma you are seeing here the cord uh, cordman's triangle etc so this one uh, guys uh, look at this you were looking at osteosarcoma the uh, sunburst uh, it will just bursting out and the epiphyseal plate is the cartilage plate is the only thing that will uh, stop the uh, burst of this 
right bone forming it is and uh, you can see cordman's triangle they are showing here the periosteum is lifted right so that is uh, what is osteosarcoma affecting metaphysis very good then uh, here are some x-rays of all that actually of the osteosarcoma then coming down here this is a uh, uh, image for Ewing sarcoma. Ewing sarcoma also affects uh, diaphysis, remember, and it is having a very, it's very um, aggressive tumor. Okay, they don't like it. Okay, then what else did we see in this video? We looked at um, the common locations of all these tumors. Mostly, it is femur. The important ones for the exam are all femur actually. Bone tumor uh, based on age, Ewing sarcoma, five to twenty years. Osteosarcoma, ten to twenty years. Osteoclastoma, twenty to forty years. Metastasis to bone uh, can happen beyond 40 years from breast, prostate and lung. Multiple myeloma greater than 40 years. Okay. Then we saw the other type of bone tumor classification. Uh, osseous tumors, uh, bone forming tumors like uh, osteoid osteoma, osteosarcoma. Cartilage forming like uh, chondroblastoma, chondrosarcoma. Then marrow tumors like um, uh, in the malignant variety, they have the myeloma. And in unknown variety, that is osteoclast, so osteoclastoma, giant cell tumor, which can also be malignant. And um, even sarcoma, which is unknown for them. Then notochordal tumor will be chordoma. And uh, some uh, surrounding structures of the bone, what and all you have, you have vascular tumors, hemangioma, uh, angiosarcoma. Then you have lipoma, liposarcoma, etc. Neuri lymoma, neuri neurofibrosarcoma, etc. Okay, guys. So the, that is another classification, and there are some tumor-like conditions like cyst, fibrous dysplasia, etc. Uh, what else? That's it. We have seen in this video. We've also seen that the cyst, cyst will affect usually the upper humerus, and tibia, etc.